All right, YouTube, it's me, David Harry, your favourite YouTuber and vlogger. Right, what it is, earlier today, I'd done a preliminary microphone test and the idea was to test the newer NW410 against my Sennheiser ME64. ME64 costs like £350, this cost about £70, okay? And the idea was to do a preliminary test to see how good this was and then maybe do another video about it if it, if it was something to recommend. Right, this microphone is absolutely stunning in this position. If you're interested in a microphone like a general purpose mic for YouTube, for your dialogue, whether that's for like doing this direct to camera thing, vlog and podcast and whatever, close mic position like this, this is an absolute must, okay? So what I would recommend you do is watch this video in its entirety because I give this microphone a really good run through with the three different capsules that it comes with. There will be links to this in the video description below and it is without a shadow of a doubt an absolute no-brainer the cardioid capsule on this is fantastic anyway watch as much of this video as you can in fact no watch it all honestly you're gonna love this microphone okay so in this video then which is a preliminary microphone test I am going to be testing out my usual Sennheiser mic here which is the ME62 I'll explain what this is in a sec against one of these things which is a newer NW410 this has replaceable heads on it so it comes with a cardioid super cardioid and an omni so i will test these out against this now what it is this microphone here is the me62 which is the head system then on the back end it has got a power module which is the k6 now the thing with this one um, it usually is self-powered and then i just plug it directly into the 3.5 millimeter mic input on the sony ax100 however to keep this particular kind of like test like a, a as even as possible I'm preamping this with my Behringer UMC202 HD it's off screen at the moment I don't want to disturb the cable and then pick it up but this has now been phantom powered through the Behringer then the Behringer is preamping straight into the Sony like I say I don't normally have to do that because this will will go straight into the Sony and that's how I always use it however and like I've just said in order to keep this kind of test as even as possible because these have to be phantom powered I'm using the same source to power and also to preamp going into the camera okay so that's enough about this microphone so what I'm going to do is switch over to the newer uh, NW410 with the cardioid capsule on it okay so this is now the newer with the cardioid head on it um, so basically what I've had to do here is like gain up a fair bit more with this and that's only because the Sennheiser which is there this has actually got quite a loud output on it what it is although the back module here I'll just unscrew it so with these with this ME series you have the head which can be interchanged for a whole bunch of things you can actually get shotgun extensions for this and then this is the K6 as you can see there it's got a battery in it and like usually I don't know if we'll see the light come on but you just kind of flip that on and the light comes on and stuff so it self powers which is awesome um, but like I say for this test I've just kind of like powered it straight from the Behringer so I'm doing like for like here now the thing is although this thing on the back isn't technically a pre-amplifier um, it's more just like a power delivery unit it does actually have a fair decent gain on it as well so the signal exiting this is really quite healthy in fact very healthy it's really good but well, it's good enough to plug straight into a camera let's put it that way which is how I always use it but nonetheless this requires less gain at the Behringer than what this does right now and it might even be the case that when I flip over to the super cardioid this might need less as well or the super cardio might, might need less or might need more I don't know I'll gauge that when I flip over over to it anyway my levels here are very healthy but they're not anywhere near peaking so in post I will have kind of raised these up a bit I won't do none of that kind of like it is with and without my extra gain in post the thing is the gain has to be in situ for this particular test because I have to even out the takes anyway so it would have to be done if this does work out well I'll do a video all on its own about this mic if it ends up that this could be something really good 
to um, what's the name I'd like to recommend to people. And I'll do a, like a bunch of different things with that kind of thing in that test. Anywho, what I'm going to do now is flip over to the supercardioid. Okay, so that's now over onto the supercardioid capsule. So I've literally just took the cardioid off and screwed it straight on. Um, as far as the levels are concerned or the gain that I've had to use for this, I've left it to where it is looking at the final metering on the camera. It is very slightly different, um, but basically I've just not changed the gain between the cardio and the super for this one. Both of them do require a lot more gain than what the Sennheiser requires. Anyway, so this will give us an idea of like what the tonal difference is between the cardioid and the super and obviously ultimately how they compare against the sennheiser as well um and the other thing to bear in mind here is that these mics i don't know whether you know wh wh whether you get them right now on amazon but usually these were on amazon for about 70 pounds 75 80 dollars something like that for a pair of them so a pair with three capsules each and also they come under different names newer i don't think newer make them because there is if i can find it, i've lost it there's another one by um somebody isk or iks or someone and that one comes out as being called there it is it's a isk and it's called little gem it's the exact same microphone the exact same three capsules that come with it um, so obviously the mic itself is made by someone else and then people just rebrand it like so yeah i don't know who makes it but it comes under multiple brands also as well i've actually tested this one by isk against the newer one and they are identical say for like whatever minuscule differences that there would be which you would get from one mic of the same range compared to the next mic in the same range so essentially the exact same mic so whether it's an isk or a newer or indeed something else that's the same yeah it would be the same in fact right now i'll pop up a, a picture of it on the screen I'm not going to do uh, any kind of close-ups here because this is a preliminary microphone test it's just not worth me getting that deep into stuff however if they end up sounding good then yes i will go into a lot more detail because these could be brilliant for this type of position for people anywho what i'm going to do now is just flip over onto the omni version of the capsule on this microphone okay so this is the omni capsule and i've had to put the gain up a bit more again it's not really worth me getting into like numbers for gain or anything like that because these things will change from person to person anyway loudness of voice and stuff like that anyways the omni is maybe not so suited to this indoor thing uh, only because it's going to be picking up the room ambience a lot more compared to the cardio and the supers and that obviously also depends upon which direction the directional capsules are pointing in because if i had them pointing straight that way behind me because there is some foam on the wall although that's not necessarily there for sound treatment it will have less reflections coming off the back there so you know directional microphones are still going to pick up the room it just depends which direction they're pointing in in relation to where the strongest of the reflections are however an omni will just pick up absolutely everything everywhere uh, but nonetheless yeah omnis are awesome outdoors i think anyway so if you're somewhere where you want to get a taste of the environment you're in uh, as well as picking up your dialogue omnis are superb for that although you wouldn't really want to start using an omni right by a busy main road and stuff which is part of what I do for my test them when I'm outdoors. Anywho, this will give you an idea of the Omni. Let me just try one thing here. I'm not too sure if the game might be too much, but okay, so what it is, I'm right on top of this Omni, right? I've just dropped the level down so I can get this close to it. It's, I've got a nice level going in, nothing's peaking, but this will give you an idea. I'm kind of going across the capsule here so I don't pop it, but this will give you an idea of what an Omni or this Omni would be like if you got really close to it, even in a like like very lively room uh, in order to give you an idea of what you could get away with as far as like you know this particular capsule is concerned anyways what i'm going to do now i'm going to put the game back there uh, where it was for this and now what i'm going to do is run through some dialogue where i'm cutting between all the microphones or all the mic kind of capsules and stuff and then i will lead that into a silence test which is just going to be me not talking 
and just like you know we'll see what the relative like self noise is between the variations of what i've been recording now for the noise test i'm not going to go higher than up to super duper levels that's craziness i used to do that in the past but it's just stupid because the thing is if you've got to gain something up to hear the noise it just means that the noise wasn't there that that much in the first place i wouldn't recommend you go gaining things up either and just listen to it in situ for what it is something about the way that you taste makes me want to clear my throat there's a method to your movements that really gets my goat i look for sniffy linings but you're rotten to the core i've had just about all i can take you know i can't take it no more i've got a gut feeling got a gut feeling got a gut feeling feeling i've got a gut feeling Okay, so just to round this up then, I'm back onto me Sennheiser here, uh, and I'll just leave it at that now for this test. So hopefully, there's going to be something good about this test, and if so, I will have put it live as well. So although it's been a prelim, I'll put it live, and what I will do, if it has gone live, it means that something good has come out of it for these little microphones, in which case I will do a dedicated video all about it at some point, if this is going to be a worthwhile recommendation for, you know, a really good close mic vlog type thing oh yeah and on the point of this being close mic and all the rest of it for this type of thing here you could just as easily mask out the microphone hopefully i've got it in a position where it can so right now i've now used what's called a clean plate which is the background without the microphone to mask where the where the microphone was in which case if you did want to do this stuff but you didn't want to have the mic in situ and you've got control of your lighting and stuff like that and you're in a room with like say closed curtains so your exposure doesn't change you could do that with this mic or any mic get it in, in and out of the shot and stuff like that so yeah there's always that that you can do with these things which is dead simple and straightforward anywho i'm gonna dive off now because this will be enough for this particular video i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now <laughs> <laughs>